Hey Cyber Heroes, Boyd Clue is here, your six figure tech career coach. And in this video today, we're gonna to talk about how to leverage AI to ace your next tech interview so that you can land a high paying job in cybersecurity. Are you ready for this? Let's go. Hey Cyber Heroes, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, I'm Boyd Clewis, six-figure tech career coach and internationally recognized cybersecurity expert, and I help people upgrade their jobs to a six-figure tech career. And if you wanna follow me on this journey, be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the red bell so that you're notified whenever I drop new content every week guaranteed to take your career to six figures and beyond. Guys, this video right here, I'm so excited about because it's super important because there's been so many people that are like, hey boy, I've gone to all these interviews and I just can't seem to land the job. What is wrong? So first of all, let me tell you this. If you are getting interviews, congratulations, because believe it or not, that's actually the hardest part. Because for some reason, people come up with this theory that if I go get a certification, I go get a college degree, I get a job, and they completely forget that you have to have an interview. And most people can't even get those. So if you're getting interviews, even though you're not getting the job, good job, at least you are getting that going. So my intent for this video is to get you over the hump so that you can excel in the interview. I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks that have come from my career from making over 200K as a security consultant and helping hundreds of people land six-figure tech roles without needing coding experience, certifications, or college degrees all in this video. So I want you to buckle up because this is gonna be good. We are going to be using a little bit of software for this video. The link is in the description. It is to the Baxter Cluis Cyber GPT. It is an AI that actually one of my clients created. It's really cool. So we're gonna be using that to do some of the prompts and research for the job interview. This video is going to be broken down into three parts. So the first part, which is most important, is preparation, preparation. And too many people go wrong for this. Guys, you cannot just show up to a job interview unprepared. I'm gonna tell you what type of things you need to be prepared for so that you go into the job interview with full ammunition, ready to knock this thing out of the park. Let's go. Okay guys, so first thing first, before we jump in, we're gonna be using the Baxter Clueless Cyber GPT AI Boosted Job Search Tool. It is actually in the Google Chrome Web Store. Link is in the description. You want to add this to your Chrome browser. This is really, really cool. So it's gonna be giving us the prompts and things to help us prepare for the job interview. So I'm gonna be using this tool throughout this video. So if you wanna follow along, you should add it. Also, leave a review for it. Okay, there were some years ago when I was still working as the senior security architect for American Airlines, I was presented with a very lucrative job offer from a company. But after I did some research on the company, I realized that I did not want to be associated with them at all. It was a check cashing and pay payday loan company. And I've seen the way that payday loan companies prey on low income people and I wanted no parts of that. So I declined that offer. I was not remotely interested in going for the interview at all. In this video, we're gonna go through the process A to Z, how to break down the company, analyze the position. We're gonna use the AI for some of this to help us out, but let's jump right into my computer right now because we need to find a job. Okay guys, so I'm on dice.com, which is a great place to find tech jobs. And remember, we look for jobs based on the skill set, not the job titles, because remember, companies hire you for your skills. And so one of the skills that I'm known for, PCI DSS, Payment Card Industry Data Security Standard. This is all about credit card data security. And so I'm in the United States, so I'm gonna search this. It's gonna bring back the results, and I'm gonna take a look at the first job right here. It is a PCI DSS compliance analyst role. And we see that this is a contract role, independent W-2, and they're looking for about eight months. And that's something I, I could be interested in. So I would take a quick look at the job description, and I'm looking at these details right now, Number one, I need to identify the company, right? Because what most companies do, they don't hire directly, they use third party recruitment firms to find talent for them. And so you gotta understand that you're not actually working for that recruitment firm that is posting this job, you're gonna be working for the end client. So when I look in this job description, I see right here, it says Darden's Restaurant. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight this 
and then I'm going to search Google to figure out what the heck is Darden's Restaurant. So Darden's Restaurant Inc. is an American multi-brand restaurant operated headquarters in Orlando. Okay, so I'm going to go to the website real quick and I'm going to go to about us. I'm just looking for alignment with what my co-values are, what I believe and what they do to make sure that they align. And so Darden's family of restaurants features some of the most recognizable and successful brands in full service dining, Olive Garden, Longhorn Steakhouse, uh, Cheddar Scratch Kitchen, Yard House. I like these restaurants, guys. So I'm just wondering now, if I get the job at this company, do I get free food? Okay, so that's cool. So the, the brands that I see are fine. Now the mission, how many people right now at the company you're working for? Let me know in the comments. Do you know what the mission is of the company that you're working for? The mission is what they do. How can you work for a company if you have no idea if their mission even aligns with your values? Their mission, to be financially successful through great people consistently delivering outstanding food, drinks, and service in an inviting atmosphere, making every guest loyal. I could get behind that. It doesn't compromise my values and what I believe. And they even list out their, their, their values, being of service, inclusion and diversity, which is important to me, um, respect and caring, integrity and fairness, excellence, teamwork, always learning learning, always teaching. Now I can leverage this core value right here of always learning and always teaching as a way to get them to pay for my certifications. You see, this is fuel if you understand what you're looking for. So we did quick research about this company. I know what type of business they're in. They're in the restaurant business, hospitality, and I'm cool with it. So now we need to inspect the job position to make sure that it aligns. I might read this job description and it may not make sense to me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up the Baxter Clues Cyber GPT and I'm gonna use a tool that's gonna translate the skills that are gonna be needed for this position so that I can make sure that my skill set is in alignment with this opportunity because I wanna make sure I put my best foot forward. So I'm gonna click the link up there. Well, we see here the AI is loaded and I'm gonna come down to the job description analyzer. Click use this prompt and I'm going to paste in that summary from the job posting and then let it run. All right, so the AI has now analyzed the job description and it's telling us now what key skills are going to be needed for this job. So now it's up to me to analyze this list and make certain that I actually have these skills. Because truth be told, most people don't land the jobs that they go to the interview for because they don't have the skills. Why would you do that? Why would you waste your time and the person that interviewing you? Why? Seriously. The next thing that we want to do is we want to scan the job posting for any type of tools, technologies, concepts, or frameworks that we may not be familiar with so that we can either get familiar or brush up with what we currently have. So one of the things that I looked inside of the, the job posting I see here, when on their preferred qualifications, it says experience using a governance risk and compliance tool such as document repository for compliance documentation. So they're talking about a GRC tool. And if you're not familiar with the GRC tool, then you may wanna go over to your friend Google and find out what are the top GRC tools. So I know like there's Archer, there's some other things that are there. So you got SAP, do some research on those and maybe even go to YouTube or go to the vendor's website to see if they offer free training, which will actually give you another avenue to find more jobs. If you find a GRC tool that's easy to use, instead of coming back to Dice and searching for PCI DSS, right up here, you would put in that tool's name right there so you can find jobs specifically tailored to that tool so that you can niche down, right? It's important to try to align your skill set and put yourself in best position to win. So we want to analyze tools and things. And then we also want to look at any educational requirements. This says preferred qualifications. I repeat, preferred. It doesn't mean it's an absolute. If you let this little thing right here discourage you from applying just because you don't have some of these things, you are not going to be successful in life. I became the security architect for American Airlines when I believe I was 25 years old. So it was around 10 years ago, right? And to this day, I still don't qualify for that job position on paper. I don't, and I excelled very well at that position for years. So look at this. It says bachelor's degree in management information systems, computer science, cybersecurity, or related field. Remember, these are preferred. 
security certifications are preferred, right? But what you have to understand is if you can demonstrate these things right here, experience in generating metrics to measure service and programs, effectiveness, blah, 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 with the skills and responsibilities that they're talking about, nobody is going to ask you about those other requirements, right? So it's important that we meet these. These are the qualifications I was talking about. If you can check the box on these things, these education requirements will not come into play because they're going to be blown away by what you can do. Hey, Cyber Heroes, it's a great time right now to like this video and subscribe to that channel. Go ahead and hit that red bell so that you're notified whenever I drop new content guaranteed to take your career to six figures and beyond. And let's continue. Now that we have an idea of what company we're going to apply to, the specific position and the requirements, now we are going to leverage the AI to give us a game plan on how to conduct ourselves during the interview. So let's jump back over to the Cyber GPT. Okay, so what we're going to do on this one, we're going to use the interview coach. So we're going to use this prompt right here and I'm going to type in, I have an interview for a PCI compliance analyst position this week and we're going to run the prompt. Okay, here we go. So the AI has run and this guy is so freaking good, man. So we're talking about potential questions and things so that you can prepare. What most people do is they show up to the interview and this is the first time this stuff has come out of their mouth and that is horrible. So you got to think about it like this. We play how we practice. But if you never practice, you're practicing doing game time, man. So review these questions, talk these things out loud in the mirror or to someone else, get feedback before you ever show up to the interview. So like the first question, can you provide an overview of your experience and skills related to PCI compliance? And it's giving you the prompt of what you should be talking about. Highlight your relevant experience in working with PCI compliance, such as any certifications you hold, specific projects you've been involved in, discuss your understanding of the PCI requirements and your ability to implement and maintain security controls. And so it gives a list of potential questions and what you should be doing. Instead of doing what most people do, they rely heavily on their academic accomplishments versus what they actually understand and how they can apply it to the business case. One of the first questions, generally speaking, that an interview will ask you is like, hey, tell me about yourself. This is an opportunity for you to stand out and be completely different. What most people start doing is they start fumbling around, mouth vomiting, all their experience, school they went to, what certifications they hold, and that's like not helping the company at all. You have to remember this, get this in your mind, guys. The company is not hiring you for fun because hiring you reduces profit because they got to pay you. They're hiring you because you have a problem. Your one job in a job interview is to understand that problem and show how your skill set is going to solve it. So when the companies ask me to tell them about myself, I flip it on them. And I answer something like this. You know, I have a lot of experience that I could talk about, but I don't want to bore you with that. Could you let me know the specific problem that you're hiring for? And I'll talk about my experience relevant to that problem. See what I'm saying? Boom, now I am targeted. I am giving them nothing but what they want to hear about the challenges that they're having because nobody else is doing it, right? So you want to keep the attention focused on them and their problem and how your skill set and your ability is going to solve the challenge that they're having. That is going to make you stand out in the job interview. The other things that you want to do during the interview, of course, if this is going to be a virtual interview, you need to show up in a well lit environment, dress nice, at least what's visible, right? You want to look presentable and you want to have some good, clean audio best as you can. Put your best foot forward, make eye, to eye contact, even in the camera, present yourself as a cool, collected, confident individual confident in your skill set and your ability to solve that company's problem. And one of the other key tips I think is very important before you go into the details about your background and everything, thank the interviewer for their time, guys. Time is something that you never get back. They are giving you their time to interview you for the position. So thank them and let them know that you are excited to have the conversation about the position because you've done your research on the company. You can tell them, I have checked into Darden restaurants and I've looked at the brands and what I'm really intrigued about are the core values. The value around always learning and always teaching, diversity and inclusion, respecting and caring. Those are things that I am passionate about and I already feel alignment in this position. So I'm just excited to talk to you about it today. So what you got to understand is like these interviews, 
need to be a conversation. Anytime you have an interview that turns into an interrogation, you're not getting that job because people want to work with other people that they can be around and converse with. Because generally speaking, employees spend more time with their coworkers than they do with their own families, right? So you're going to want to work with somebody that you want to stand to be around. So it's important that you showcase your personality and that you've actually looked into the company. This is why we're doing this research so we can talk about maybe you saw in the news where the company's developing a new technology or a security incident happened. Just something that you are aware of what they have going on and you are ready to add value to help them reach their goals. Okay, guys, I am about to give y'all my biggest nugget ever for job interviews. The biggest nugget ever. If you ain't listening to nothing else I said, this thing right now, you need to do it every interview. But let me know in the comments if you've gone to an interview and you felt like you crushed it, man, and you didn't get the job. And it helped, it left you wondering like, what is wrong with me, man? I'm gonna tell you exactly what happened. Perception and reality when it comes to interviews are not what they seem. You may be feeling like you're killing the thing, but the person that's interviewing you is annoyed and they don't want to hire you. And it may be because something that you said, something that you did, but you don't know unless you what? Ask. So here is the most powerful question that you can ask during a job interview, because generally speaking, at the end of the interview, they're going to ask if you have any questions. And so there are some questions that I like to ask, you know, how soon are you looking to make a decision? Um, that's one of the questions I like to ask, but that's not the most important. I'm not going to go into a lot of follow up questions. The one question that you should always ask based on everything that we discussed today, my background, my experience, is there any reason why you wouldn't offer me this job? You feel the tension from that question, how uncomfortable that is? Oh my goodness. I have asked that question in every interview that I've gone through, except for the one time I interviewed at American Airlines for a vulnerability management position and I didn't get it. The reason why you wanna ask this question is, it gives you the opportunity to overcome any objections. You gotta realize that you need to manage your career like it's a business and that an interview is just a sales consultation and you're the salesman. You're selling your services. A good salesperson is good at handling objections. And objections are just reasons why people wouldn't buy. So you want to understand why they're not buying your service. So maybe they might say, hey, you know what? The way you answer this question, I'm not sure you have the right experience that we're looking for right now. So that gives you an opportunity to rebut and clear up any misconceptions that they have. Because if you don't, they're going to be left with what's ever in their mind, right? So that question is very uncomfortable, but if you ask it, it's going to save you heartache because there is nothing like thinking you killed the interview and you didn't. Okay guys, part three, and this is very important, post interview. Once the interview is over, it is very important that you send an email to the person that uh, interviewed you to thank them for their time. Because remember, they're giving you something that they can never get back, which is their time. And the cool thing is the AI can generate it for you. So let's jump back into the cyber GPT. So what I would do is I would come down here and write this simple prompt. Write a short thank you email to John at Darden for taking the time to interview me for the PCI compliance analyst position and how excited I am to join the team. So we're gonna hit enter on that and let the AI generate an email for us. Yo, and this email is fire. Hope this email finds you well. I wanted to take a moment to express my sincere gratitude for the opportunity to interview for the PCI DSS compliance analyst position at Darden. It was a pleasure meeting you and discussing the role and its responsibilities. I generally appreciate the time you dedicated to our conversation. Your insightful questions and blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to read the whole thing. You can. All you got to do is pause the screen and read it. But you can modify this any way that you feel it needs to be modified. Send that email off right? You want to stay top of mind as they are looking at other candidates, and which is also another question that you could ask when in the interviews. Like, hey, are you looking at any other candidates? How soon are you looking to make a decision? That is part three in the, the post interview. What you should also do is have a reflective moment. So one of the things that I've noticed when it comes to like interviews, public speaking, I like to do something in retrospect. When I'm done, I like to sit down, meditate a little bit, think about what I said and maybe what I could have said differently or maybe something that slipped my mind. So it's important to go back and evaluate that experience so that you can improve on it the next time. Super important. 
don't don't sleep on that. Super important because you want to use this as an opportunity to improve on the next interview. And even if you feel that this interview went very well, do not stop. Continue looking at other opportunities, connecting with other hiring managers. As a matter of fact, if you look on my channel, you will see several videos about how to generate um, interviews automatically using LinkedIn, how to use AI to generate interviews. That's what this channel is about, guys. So take advantage of the resources that are available here to get you in the position so that you can talk to hiring managers and sell them into your new six figure position. Well, Cyber Hero, if you feel that maybe this is a lot of work and you're interested in an opportunity to join the Baxter Clues Training Academy, where we do all this for you. We have a dedicated team to coach you, mentor you, give you the six figure skills, the coaching, the resume support, the interview prep so that you can walk into a six figure career in as little as 90 days. I invite you to apply. You can go to www.boycluas.com forward slash GRC to apply or click the link in the description. So I will let you know that we have limited spaces open. So it's important that you get your application in and see if this is a good fit for you. When you go over to our website, you'll actually see a case study how we've helped more than 400 people upgrade their jobs to six-figure tech careers and how you could be the next. So click the link in the description. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the red bell so that you're notified whenever I drop new content every week guaranteed to take your career to six figures and beyond. And well, guys, that's it for this video. I'll see you on the next one.